are listening to the Heartland Author Podcast. I am Aaron Apollo Camp. For today's episode, I had the opportunity to interview Bob Gonzalez. Bob is a fisherman and the author of A Flicker in the Water. I'm here with Bob Gonzalez, who is a fisherman and the author of A Flicker in the Water. Bob, welcome to the Heartland Author Podcast. Hi, Aaron. How are you? Feel free to introduce yourself to our listeners. Yeah, like Aaron said, uh, my name is Bob Gonzalez. Uh, I recently authored a book about uh, sea adventures titled The Flicker in the Water. It was a labor of love for me doing it. A lot of the stories are my own personal experiences out on the ocean, uh, mostly in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, but And you don't necessarily need to be a fisherman to enjoy the book. I wrote it in a way that appeals to... Um, People who've never been out on the water, I want them to feel the experience of what it's like out there. And um, I want also landlubbers, I mean, sea, seamen can uh, learn a lot from it as well. Uh, I actually learned a lot of things myself while I was writing the book, and uh, I hope uh, the readers will enjoy it. And it's good for all ages, from kids that's age 7 on up. Without spoiling too much of a flicker in the water... Is it a novel, novella, short story collection, poetry collection, or nonfiction book? And what is your book about? It's a nonfiction, mostly nonfiction collection of short stories. Uh, there are some fictional accounts in there. There's some poetry in there, too, actually. I wrote a few poems about the sea. Um, they can look at all that stuff on my website, flickerinthewater.com. It's got uh, all the details on there. Um, it's a most of the stories are my own. I spent 15 years out in the Gulf. Uh, I've spent a couple of years in the Atlantic, uh, in different places in the Caribbean, doing some fishing and some boating, and uh, all those stories are in there. Um, but there are fictional accounts as well. I talk about Poseidon, the uh, god of the sea, and what he means to the seas. Um, I talk about pirates. I actually talk a little bit about Christopher Columbus and his voyages as well. And I learned a few things while I was uh, writing all about all those things. For some of our listeners in the Midwest, Bob Gonzalez is a fisherman who mainly fishes off the Florida Gulf Coast, so the types of fish he'll catch are quite a bit different than what people in a lake in Wisconsin or Minnesota, for example, might catch. For sure, yeah. I mean, here we get um, we get a, a wide variety of fish, um, a, a lot of pelagic fish, meaning they travel, uh, they come in from the Atlantic and the Caribbean. And they make their way up the Gulf Coast. Um, we get wahoos and mahi mahis and marlin and um, sailfish, uh, groupers, red snappers, um, amberjacks, triggerfish, all kinds of lots of sharks, all all kinds of fish out tuna. I mean, you name it. We have a wide variety of fish out there. Is a flicker in the water self-published, traditionally published, or published via hybrid press? It's, uh, I guess you would call it hybrid. I did it through a company called Mindster Media, and I did that for several reasons. Um, number one, I've never uh, been a writer before. This is my first book, um, first real book, and I didn't really know what I was doing, and uh, I just thought it would be worth it if I had professionals do it. And um, they also work with Mariel Hemingway, who wrote the foreword for my book, uh, Ernest's Granddaughter. Uh, my book um, is kind of along the same lines as Old Man in the Sea, maybe you could say. Um, my dad was from Cuba, where Old Man in the Sea was written in the 1950s, so I just thought it'd be a great idea to have Mariel uh, write the foreword for the book. And, you know, they gave her the book, and she liked it, and she agreed to do it, and uh, I was thankful that she did. You mentioned that Mariel Hemingway wrote the foreword of your book. How were you able to convince her to write the foreword of your book? Well, she works with Mindster Media, the publishing company that I worked with. And um, if she, they give her proposals and scripts and uh, book uh, book titles. And if she, she'll she read them and look them over. And if she feels it's a good fit and she likes the book, she writes, she'll write a foreword for you. And that's what she did for me. She said um, the book, my book spoke to her with a great uh, sense of appreciation, which meant a lot to me. How long did it take you to write A Flicker in the Water? It took about a year, actually. By the time I started getting the uh, word to paper and the editing and the formatting and everything that's involved, it took a, a, a good bit of time. It took about a year. Do you plan on writing more books? And if so, 
What are ideas you have for books you might write in the future? I've got a book I'm working on now.、Um, it's a book, a sports book, but it's a little different than your typical sports book. I have poems about football in there, and、uh, I talk about each of the major league franchises. I give like a brief history of each of the franchises.、Um, There's a, it's, it's met, said in a serious way and an informative way, but it's、uh, with a little humor is bent to it as well, which I always enjoy doing that. How large was the largest fish you ever caught, and what type of fish was it? I think、um, the largest fish may have been a swordfish that we caught. It was 450 pounds.、Uh, that fish、uh, struck in the middle of the night around 2 a.m. And、um, I've caught a couple of blue marlin, but I've never caught a real big blue marlin. The biggest fish that I've caught is that swordfish. Your largest catch? How many people did it take to haul that one in? Well, everybody has a different job when you're reeling in、uh, sport fish like that. You have one guy that's on the rod and reel, and nobody else is supposed to touch that rod and reel if.、Uh, If the fish is ever big enough to qualify for any sort of record, if somebody else touches that reel, it becomes disqualified. So we always try to keep one person on the rod and reel,、uh, one person as a gaff person or a net person when the,、um, the, the fish is coming close. And then、uh, we have the,、uh, the captain up, you know, guiding the boat, keeping the line and the water in the right way so the fish、uh, hopefully won't break off. And,、um, you know, so everybody has their own different job to do, and it takes about three or four different people to do the, the different tasks. Aside from your biggest catch, what was your most interesting real life fishing experience? Well, the、um, inspiration for the title of the book, A Flicker in the Water, came from、um, a massive tuna that we were.、Uh, That we were fighting in the、uh, Gulf of Mexico near Louisiana.、Um, out there in Louisiana Gulf Coast, there's a lot of oil rigs, and at certain times of the year, they hold a lot of tuna. And、uh, this, we were there at a time they happened to have a lot of tuna. And I、uh, tell the story <laughs> how we got there. And the, for the first few, few hours, those tuna didn't want anything to do with us. They didn't even care that we were there. But、uh, after a while, they came around. And、uh, that, again, this was another late night fish that.、Uh, That bid、uh, around 2 a.m. again. This、uh, tuna took our line and started screaming the reel, and、uh, we've、um, battled him for several hours. and You can see how that one turned out in the book. What are some of the main differences between fishing off the Florida Gulf Coast and fishing in the Caribbean? Well, the,、um, the wave action in the Gulf Coast is a little different.、Um, In the Gulf Coast, we get more swells than we, we get waves more in the Atlantic. Um, I don't know if it's because it's an、uh, enclosed body of water or exactly what the reason is, but in the Gulf of Mexico, the,、uh, the swells, meaning the,、um, the push of the water gets higher and it doesn't break as much as it does. The wave action in the Atlantic breaks a lot more. But I will tell you a few interesting things about the,、um, the Gulf that I, that I didn't know when I was writing the book.、Um, there's a continuous、uh, flow of water called the loop current that. Comes into the Gulf of Mexico from the Caribbean continuously. It never stops and it flows north about six miles an hour. And it's one of the fastest moving currents in the world. And it's about 150 miles wide and about 5,000 feet deep. And this thing creates offshoots that last for up to two years sometimes. Some of them one run clockwise, other ones run counterclockwise, which I didn't know. And、um, What the loop current does is it comes in, sometimes it barely enters the Gulf. It, what it always does is it wraps in between Cuba and Key West and connects with the Gulf Stream and goes up the North Atlantic coast. But,、um, and I, I didn't know that either, actually. <laughs> But、uh, it, sometimes it barely enters the Gulf before making its turn, its loop into Cuba and Key West. Other times it makes its way all the way up to the northern Gulf Coast around Louisiana to Florida. Before making its wrap. And I think what it did, you remember that oil spill,、um, that Horizon oil spill? Deepwater Horizon, that was in off the Gulf Coast, Louisiana. I, what the、uh, loop current helped to do was it helped to flush out a lot of that oil out of the Gulf and kind of like disperse it. So it hardly affected the Gulf at all over time. It's as clean as a whistle now. You would never even know there was an oil spill there. That's what the loop current did. That and it holds fish and it、uh, creates ve vegetation and it keeps the Gulf clean. 
I didn't really know a lot of those things about the loop current. I knew there was a loop current. I just didn't know how vast it was and what it actually did. And I thought that was really interesting. Another thing I found really interesting too, and well, two things actually. <laughs> I didn't know this either. I, I didn't know the Mediterranean Sea, which I never fished, but I, in my research I came across this. It's uh, between Morocco and Spain is the only in entrance in and out of there. And it's only nine miles wide. That's it. <laughs> the Mediterranean Sea is actually bigger than the Gulf of Mexico, but its entrance is only nine miles wide in and out. I don't know how fish get in and out of there, but somehow they do <laughs> because it's a great fishery, the Mediterranean Sea. That's one thing. Another thing I learned that I thought was really interesting was um, uh, the Sea of Galilee in northern Israel. I thought the Sea of Galilee, because Israel is on the Mediterranean Sea, and I thought the Sea of Galilee was in the Mediterranean, but it's not. It's actually a landlocked freshwater lake in northern Israel, which I never knew that. And I thought that was really interesting. When I, in my research for the book, I learned all these things. One final question regarding your book. Who designed the cover of your book? Because that cover looks cool. Yeah, that's a Goliath grouper. Uh, <laughs> The, that's the Goliath grouper is the biggest grouper in the grouper family and we catch a lot of them here in Florida actually um, they were endangered for a while so they stopped harvesting them and um, they've come back in droves so they're very plentiful down here now and uh, believe it or not they're a, a shallow water fish you can catch them sometimes right off a bridge in the Keys or in um, Naples Florida down in South Florida and um, they're they're plentiful so but and but they're huge though they're the biggest group they can be seven eight hundred pounds um that actual picture comes from a um a tourist attraction as you enter the harbor in the netherlands it's uh it's a fountain it's a that was there in front of the uh, tourist center in the netherlands bob you were a wonderful guest for this podcast and i thank you for appearing on the heartland author podcast thank you aaron i hope you and your listeners enjoy it Bob was a wonderful and interesting guest. This is Aaron Apollo Camp reminding you all to write your imagination. Bye for now. You can learn more about me and my book writing projects at camparenapollo.witsite.com forward slash author AAC. You can follow me on Facebook at author AAC and on Instagram at AAC Scribe. Copyright 2023, Aaron Apollo Camp, All Rights Reserved. This podcast episode is intended for the private listening of our audience. Any reuse or retransmission of this podcast episode without the express written consent of the podcast host is prohibited, except under fair use guidelines. Royalty free music and sound effects obtained from https colon forward slash forward slash www.zapsplat.com.